Hi, it's November 19th, 2017, 11 p.m. And this tutorial is basically an overview of the tutorials that I put a link to in my Facebook. Um, it's from the YouTube channel three, uh, Tech3Info. And he's got a, a lot of videos out there that I just started watching. This particular one that I'm emulating comes from his Create, Retrieve, Update, Delete CRUD using Local Storage Part 1 and Part 2. CRUD, again, stands for Create, Retrieve, Update, and Delete. So if you want to watch Tech3's uh, Info's videos, it's Tech, T-E-C-H, 3, T-H-R-E-E, -E, and Info, capital I, capital N, capital F, capital O. And his CRUD videos, part one and part two with local storage, are under the heading Mobility Classroom Session. So you kind of have to dig in there because he's got 138 videos currently under Mobility Classroom Sessions. But after watching his two vid videos, I've basically emulated them in this. The only thing that's really different here is the way I styled some elements. Other than that, this is his code. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this works, and I'm going to go over the styles first. So as you can see, I've got a header up here that says registration, and down at the bottom, I have a footer that's got my name and the copyright symbol and the date. Um, both the header and the footer have a gold background with a gold border. They both have purple font. The header is using um, H2 tag to give it this size of font. And the footer is giving me an H, uh, is using an H5, which is a smaller font. Okay, then we've got a table over here. And as you can see, we've got um, five table header cells. First name, last name, role number, subject, and action. It's surrounded by a container, well not a container, but an element that has a green border. Um, then over here on the left, you actually see one, two, three, four, five field sets. Each field set is designed to have a background of pink and a border that's dotted. And so you can see the pink background, you can see the dots. That represent each field set. We've got buttons down here at the bottom, register and clear, that um, call different functions. And each one of these is um, an input area. And this right here is a select, which is a drop down list. You could choose from any of these options. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and whip off the styles. For the body of the page, the body is, has a margin set to zero pixels, auto padding, zero pixels, font family sans serif. For the elements in the page that uh, represent the header, the footer, and the aside, those were given a display set to block. The heading tags, the H2 and the H5, which I told you was for the header and the footer, those two elements have color set to purple, text align set to center, margin set to zero pixels, and padding set to one pixels. The labels for the places that you input your text and the select right here where you select something from this uh, list, the labels for each of those have the display set to block. The field set, which I explained to you, uh, is over here, these field sets on the left. Uh, the border, the border for each seal field set is set to seven pixels maroon dotted. The margin is zero auto and the background color is pink. Here, the input and the select. The input is where you can type in your name. And the select is where you could make a selection here out of different options. So for all of those we have width set to 100 percent height 30 pixels border radius 5 pixels padding left 10 pixels font size 14 pixels the select by itself is given a line height of 30 pixels and a background of pound f4 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 the buttons anywhere you see a button any button gets this set of styles. Font size, 15 pixels, padding 3 pixels, border radius 12 pixels, background, pound FF0033, color, pound FFF, FFF, float left, width 100%, and margin 
zero pixels auto. The table is what we've got going over here on the right. You see the table header, but you don't see any table rows. Um, so for the table itself, it's got border collapse set to collapse, margin set to zero auto, and width set to 100%. Then we've got a couple of things that share these styles. The table, the table header, and the table data cell all get a border set to seven pixels, gray ridge, padding five pixels. The table header cells, just these up here, have a width set to 20%, text align set to left, and a background color of pound 999, which is a type of gray. So 20, each one of these table headers, being that they have a width of 20%, and the reason they have 20% is because you have one, two, three, four, five in this section with the green um, border. If you take your calculator and you want to know what is one-fifth, you have one divided by five. Well, one divided by five gives you 0.2, which is 20%. So that's how I have the width set to 20%. That gives it a liquid layout, which means as I open this up, we've got some flexibility. It doesn't have a static width. It gets wider and wider depending on the uh, area that is in the element that it resides inside of. Okay, so that was the table header. Now we're going to go over some classes. And again, these are his classes. Class header bar top and followed by a comma, we have class dot header bar bottom. So this is dealing with this registration up here area and this uh, footer area, Lisa Woodson, copyright 2017. Um, we've got background color set to gold, border set to seven pixels, gold ridge, padding set to zero pixels, margin set to zero pixels, auto font, family set to cursive. For the class header bar bottom, we have clear both. If we don't use clear both for this section down here at the bottom, let me misspell it and show you how weird your page will look if you don't set that footer. Look, it comes way up here. You don't want that. You want the footer to be at the foot. So you got to give it that clear both setting. And there you go. All right, we have a class called container. And that's actually containing everything. That's this blue border here that you see that goes all the way around all of the page elements. The styles for the class of container is width set to 95% with a minimum width set to 590 pixels, a border of seven pixels blue ridge, float set to left, and background color set to black. Then we have two classes, class left bar and class right bar. So left bar comma right bar both of them get a border of seven pixels green ridge. So as you can see, we have a little contained area over here to the left with this pink stuff. And then we've got over here another green bordered area with um, a table uh, with a gray table header. So both of those, you see the seven pixels of green ridge. It's for class left bar and class right bar. Class left bar also has unique styles that belong to only it. And those unique styles are width set to 25%, float set to left, and a minimum width set to 150 pixels. That's this section over here to the left with the pink background. Then uh, we have the class right bar, and that's this whole section over here, the bigger section on the right. That has a width set to 70%, a float set to right, and a minimum width set uh, to 250 pixels. The very last style for this particular project, um, the, the ID, which is represented by the pound symbol, ID table rows, gets a color set to white. Because I didn't set the table rows um, to a different background color, when we create a table row, it's going to have the container's black background it's going to be transparent. You're going to see the black table background. So I can visualize the um, text as we create a row. I just gave the table rows ID a color of white. So it'll be kind of like a chalkboard. Now let me 
um, go ahead and hit the register button and you'll see what I'm talking about. See the new table row? We have a color of white, so it kind of resembles a chalkboard. Plus, in, under the action table data cell here in this row, we have an edit button and a delete. If I were to create um, another registration here, let's make a John Doe, let's give him this number, and let's put his subject as chemistry. Register. Now we've got another table row here. John Doe, roll number 345, subject is chemistry. Let's do one more. All right, so now we've got three table rows. Each row has its own edit or delete button. And over here, you can see the register in the clear. Let's say I want to change um, Tabby Cat. I'm going to hit Edit. Now all the Tabby Cat information comes over here in our little pink uh, field set section. So I'm going to change the last name from Tabby Cat to Tabby Dog. Tabby got married and had to change her last name. And let's see, we'll keep the roll number the same. This time, though, um, she's remarried and she's going to take another college class. This time she's going to take physics. Well, no, let me take that back. This is changing her information, not adding a new row. Because we're updating, this is going to change her information now. She's right here, Tabby Cat 786 English. We're changing her last name because she got married and she decided she does not want to take English. She wants to take physics instead. So this is not adding a new set of information. This is changing. This is updating. There you go. So here we have now Tabby Dog 786 Physics. Well, let's see. So she's newly married. We changed her name. We changed her, her um, class. But something in life happens and she can't actually make classes after all so therefore we have to delete her from the file so you hit delete and she's gone so problem solved we made some changes we made some adaptations but something else happened and we have to take her off the roster so there you have it so you can see the functionality of these uh, buttons let's say John Doe wanted to edit his information. So you see when you hit edit, all of his information comes over here in the section on the left. And then he's like, oh, uh, I don't really have time to talk to you, so I can't really update anything right now. So um, never mind, I'll call you back later, bye. So instead of making any changes in there, we can hit clear. And so now we're not obligated to do anything else for this row. So now somebody else makes a call and they want to register for classes. Um, and so therefore, we don't have to do anything else but start typing in the new person's information. And so we register the next new person. So as we go on, this is how this particular um, thing works. Um, I went over all of the style. I went over showing you how it functioned. So now let's go over the page itself with all of the code. Oh, I don't need to look at this. This is my style. Okay, registration.html. I'm not going to go into any explanation because the other two tutorials that I told you about uh, from Tech3Info's YouTube channel, he goes over the explanation. I'm just going to go over the code from top to bottom. So inside the HTML tags, we have a head and we have a body. Let me open up the head and let's just see what's in the head. We have title that says to do. You can change that to whatever you want, whatever you want to show up in the browser tab. We have meta chart. Char set equals UTF-8. We have meta name equals viewport. Content equals width equals device width, comma, initial scale equals 1.0. And then we have link href equals mystyle.css. REL equals style sheet. Make sure that you use uh, the double quotes wherever you see them as shown. This is linking to this style sheet that I already went over. Let 
Now we also have a script inside of our head. Let's look at the script. This is all JavaScript. The top, the first two statements are global variables. The first statement var selected index equals negative one. The second statement var students array equals, and then you've got this empty array symbol of square brackets. So those are two global variables. They're variables created outside of functions. We are going to go over a variety of JavaScript functions in the head here inside of the script tags. We are going to go over function init that has uh, nothing in the parentheses, no parameters. We're going to go over function on register pressed. Again, no parameters in the parentheses. We're going to go over this function prepare table cell and this does have parameters in the parentheses index comma first name comma last name comma roll num comma subject so we've got one two three four five parameters for the function prepare table cell we are going to go over function delete table row and it has one parameter called index we will go over function on clear pressed no parameters in the parentheses, empty parentheses there. And then finally, we'll go over function on edit pressed. And that has one um, parameter called index. And there's the end of the ending script tag, ending head. After we finish all the head information, we'll look at what's inside of the body. So quickly, let's look at function init. Let me open it up. So the first thing that happens inside a function in it is document dot get element by ID parentheses and double quote or parentheses and quotes table rows dot enter HTML equals an empty string. Then we have an if condition if local storage dot students record then in the quotes here I mean the um, curly braces from line 18 all the way to line 26 if local storage dot students record students array equals JSON dot parse and then in parentheses local storage dot students record so that is one whole statement if local storage dot students record then students array equals JSON dot parse parentheses local storage dot students dot students record Here's a for loop for var i equals zero, i less than students array dot length, i plus plus. And our for loop goes from here to here. Prepare table cell. So we're calling in this for loop, we're calling prepare table cell. And all this stuff is in the um, parentheses. We're calling prepare table cell, which is a function. The first thing being I. After the comma, we have the second argument, which is students array index I dot first name, comma. The next argument is students array index I dot last name, comma. The next argument is students array index i dot roll num comma and then the last argument is students array index i dot subject there's the end of the for loop here's the end of the if and here's the end of the init function okay so we're done with that function that's the initialization function I'll close that up and now let's look at the function on register press. That's when you press this button that says register right here. That's what's going to happen there. Open it up. Function on register pressed. Empty parentheses opening curly brace. Our first name equals document deck element by ID parentheses quotes first name dot value. Next, var last name equals document docket element by ID parentheses quotes last name dot value. Next, var roll num equals document docket element by ID parentheses quotes roll num dot value. 
next. For subject equals document decade element by ID, parentheses quotes dot uh, subject dot value. So you're seeing the pattern here, right? Pretty sure you should be seeing the pattern, except right here, this is a little different because we're creating an object. We're creating student object and we're uh, sh giving the short form STU capital OBJ. So var stu obj equals, and then in curly braces, we have key value pairs. The key is on the left hand side of the colon, the value is on the right hand side of the colon. So the key, the first key value pair is first name, all in lowercase, colon, first capital N name, that's the value. The next key value pair, so this was the first key value pair in um, in the curly braces. First name, colon, first name, comma. Now here's the next key value pair. Last name, colon, last name. And again, check out the what's capitalized and what's not. The third key value pair in this student object is roll num, colon, colon roll num, comma, and finally, in this student object, we have the key value pair subject, colon, subject. And subject is not two words put together. Um, it's just one single word. So you have both subjects, lowercase. Now, here I've got a note that lets me know about the next piece of code we're going to look at. The next thing we're going to look at is an if and an, an if else statement, which is going to decide if we're dealing with an existing item that's going to get updated, or are we dealing with a new item that gets inserted? So if you have a new item that gets inserted, we're dealing with this register and a brand new row. If we're dealing with editing one of the pre-existing rows here, then um, that's an item that gets updated. So there's, there's a, a constraint there that needs to understand which thing is actually happening. So our if condition, if selected index triple equals negative one if that's true then in the curly braces we have the statement students array dot push parentheses stew obj and that would be for an insert now if we're not inserting something new selected index is not equal to negative one then we're going to go to the else condition here the else statement and we're going to do this students array dot splice and in parentheses we have selected index comma one comma stu obj and that else block would be for an update that's what that's the code we would use to update something that's already in existence here all right so there's the end of the else condition of the else block let's go down to the next couple of statements in this function this statement is local storage dot students record equals JSON dot stringify parentheses students array. After that statement, we call the init function. So you have init, empty parentheses, semicolon. And then after calling the init function, we're going to call another function called onclear pressed. So that these are two, these two things, the init and onclear pressed, are just function calls. We're calling two different functions in this function on the on register pressed function at the end we call these two all right so we completely finished the on register pressed which again runs when we click this button down here that says register or it deals with also if there's something being edited all right so let me close that up Let's look at the function prepare table cell that has all of these um, parameters index, first name, last name, roll num, and subject. So the first thing that happens after we call this with all those parameters is var table equals document decade element by D parentheses and quotes table rows. Next statement var row equals table dot insert row empty parentheses next var first name cell equals row dot insert cell parentheses zero now watch the pattern var last name cell equals row dot insert cell parentheses one a little more pattern seeking here var row num cell equals row dot insert cell parentheses two var subject cell equals row dot insert cell parentheses three 
var action cell equals row dot insert cell parentheses four. And you want to look at the patterns because if you want to take this code and make it your own, make it for something different other than what, what's going on here, you have to understand what each of these things are named if you want to change this to make it your own. So pay attention to the patterns when you get into renaming. First name cell dot enter HTML equals first name. Last name dot cell, I'm sorry, last name cell dot enter HTML equals last name. Roll num cell dot enter HTML equals roll num. Subject cell dot enter HTML equals subject. And the last statement right here is a little on the long side. It's action cell dot enter HTML equals and we have all of this stuff in, in single quotes. Button on click equals, and then you have all of this stuff in double quotes. On edit pressed, so we're calling the on edit pressed function, and inside um, the parentheses, we have a single quote, the plus symbol, index and the plus symbol followed by the closing single quote close up your parentheses close up your double quotes and close up your button tag so all of that highlighted right now is your opening button tag you have the word edit inside the button tag that's what you see over here the word edit on all of these buttons then you have the ending button tag right here as shown in the purple. That's the ending. After the ending uh, button tag for the button, you have a break tag, which goes down a line. And then we have another button. This button, opening button tag, has an on click, which is going to call the delete table row function. And in the parentheses, you have single quote plus index plus single quote then here's your closing double quote and your closing uh, your symbol here that closes up the opening tag for the button all that highlighted is the opening button tag which has the word delete on it as you can see over here delete 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 and then you have your ending button tag so all of that stuff is one line of code. You have one semicolon here. That's all one line of code. And then your ending um, curly brace for the prepare table cell function. So from top to bottom, that's the prepare table cell function. Let's close that up. Let's look at the next function called delete table row. So after you name it, function, delete table row, and in parentheses you have uh, index and your opening curly brace, the first line is this one. Students array dot splice parentheses index comma one. After that, we have this. Local storage dot students record equals JSON dot stringify parentheses students array. And then we call the init function again at the end of the delete table row function. Right before the end in curly brace, we call that init function as well. All right, so we finished the delete table row function. Let's close that up. Let's look at the next one, function on clear pressed. So this is what's going to happen every time we hit this clear button. So function on clear pressed empty parentheses open curly brace. First thing we have is selected index equals negative one, followed by document deck element by ID parentheses and quotes first name dot value equals an empty string, followed by document deck element by ID parentheses quotes last name dot value equals empty string. Again, you're seeing a pattern here, so just enjoy the pattern. Document dot get element by ID parentheses quotes roll num dot value equals empty string. Document dot get element by ID parentheses quotes subject dot value equals math. Now, since we're hitting the clear button, 
Making each of these things have an empty string was easy enough, but with our select here, we are changing the value to math because that's the first thing in the selection list here that we have. Math, physics, chemistry, English, and psychology. It's the top one, so we're using that as a default. Lastly, uh, the last thing that happens on the onclear pressed function is document.getElementById parentheses and quotes submit dot enter HTML equals register. So what that does is um, when you click the clear button, the last thing that is going to happen is you're going to get this register. It's going to ensure that this button says register on it. And that's really, it just wants to make sure that that's what it says instead of update. All right, so there's the ending curly brace for the on clear pressed function. Let's close that up. And let's look at the very last one we have on edit pressed. So now when we click the edit button over here, you're going to see what happens when it calls this function. On edit pressed and in parentheses we have index. So when you call function on edit pressed with the parameter of index, the first thing that happens is we have selected index set to index. Selected index equals index. After that, we have var stu obj, again, short for student object, var student object equals students array. And then we have our square brackets here with the word index inside. The next thing that happens is this. Document that get element by ID parentheses quotes first name dot value equals student object dot first name. I'm just going to say student object because it sounds better than saying stu obj. The next thing that happens is document dot get element by ID parentheses quotes last name dot value equals student object dot last name. You're seeing the pattern again. Document dot get element by ID parentheses quotes roll num dot value equals student object dot roll num. Document dot get element by get element by ID parentheses quotes subject dot value equals student object dot subject. And finally, last but not least, document dot get element by ID parentheses quotes submit dot enter HTML equals update. And there is the ending curly brace for the on edit pressed function. So now we went over all the functions in the JavaScript in the head of the HTML web page. So because I finished the script and I finished the head, I'm going to close up the head. Close that up. So now you see what we started with, the HTML and the head. Now we're going to look at everything in the body. First thing you see before I even open this up is body on load equals init. So when the page for is first turn, um, turned on, if it's first loaded, when you first open it, it's automatically calling the init function that we went over. Every time you open the page, it does all of the commands that are in the init function. The next thing we see in the body is div class equals container. Remember, container is one something that I uh, gave a style to, and that is this blue border with a black background. Next thing we have here is header, class equals head bar top. Remember we gave head bar top a style in our CSS sheet, a style sheet. We also um, gave our h2 a style as well. So header, class equals header bar top. Inside of that we have our h2 tags that say registration, which is what you see right here. All right. This header is not the same as head. Just to let you know, this is this is an element in the page. This is a part of the HTML file. You have a head and a body in the HTML, but this is just a name for uh, the header, not the head. Here is an aside, class equals left bar. Again, in the CSS style sheet, we gave left bar a style. The aside goes from line 132 all the way to 168. And so therefore, 
left bar, it's all of the stuff right here on the left hand side. So in that section, the side that has the class of left bar, we've got a div. Nothing special about the div, just, just a division here that goes from line 132, 33 and nests everything to line 167. So it's just a div inside the aside. All right. Here's a field set. This is the first field set from line 135 to 138. Inside the field set, label 4 equals first name, then you see the text first name, and then you see the ending label tag. That's what you see right here. After that label, you have an input. Input type equals text, placeholder equals enter first name, ID equals first name. The placeholder is what you see inside of where you, the user will type. You can't erase it. It's the placeholder. It stays there. This just lets the user understand what, what it is they're supposed to type in there. And there's the end of that first field set. So all you got in this first field set is the pink with the dotted border, the label, and um, a text an input for text. After that field set, we have another field set. Field set, label for last name with the uh, text that you can see that says last name. Close your label up. Underneath the label, you have input type equals text, placeholder, placeholder equals enter last name, ID equals last name, and your field set. That's this whole bit right here, this and what's underneath it. The third field set, field set, label for roll num. Text that you can see is roll number and label. Underneath the label, we have input type equals text, placeholder equals enter roll number, ID equals roll num, and your field set. Next, field set. This field set is for our drop down list. Field set, label for subject. The text that you see says subject right here. Now we're using a select element. Select ID equals subject and all of the possibilities that you can choose from are called options. Option value equals math and the text you see on the web page math and option. The next option, option value equals physics. The word you see is physics and you end your option. Option value equals che chemistry. The word you see is chemistry. Close your option tag. Opening option tag value equals English. The text you see when you do this, you know, math, physics, chemistry, English. End your option tag. Last option, option value equals psychology. The word that you see in that drop down list is psychology. Close your option tag. So there you have math, physics, chemistry, English, and psychology. Those are all options. You're ending select tag, you're ending field set tag. The last field set here is right here. That This is the last field set down here. Label for submit. This takes you down a new space. It's and NBSP colon. That's just taking you down a new space. And then you end your label. Button. ID equals submit. On click equals and that this button is calling this JavaScript function on register pressed. Here's the name on the button that you'll see and there's the end of the button. So you're looking at this register button down here. After the register button we have another button. Button ID equals clear. On click equals on clear pressed. The word you see on the button is right here clear and there's the end of the button. So this button that says clear when you click it, it calls the onClear pressed function. Close up your field set. That's the last field set. Here's the ending div tag and here's the ending aside. So now we have went over this whole pink section over here on the left. Next, we're going to go over the aside that does the um, stuff on the right. So aside class equals right bar. What's inside of this is a table. As you can see, there's the nested aside tags. Here's the nested table tags. The opening table tag says table ID equals reg table. Then we have uh, a section called T head. We've got table row tags. 
<clears throat> inside of the first table row, we've got one, two, three, four, five table headers. In the first table header, it says first name, as you can see right here. In the second table header, you see last name, as you can see right here. The third table header says roll number, right there. The fourth table header says subject, right there. And the fifth table header says action, right there, right there. All right, so close up your table row, close up your T head. T head, I guess short for table head, because that's what we're using this, all these table header tags to be the head of the table. Then we have something called T body. We gave it an ID set to table rows and ending T body tag. Because if I kill all of these, the only thing that naturally opens up when you first open up the page before anybody starts clicking and typing stuff or typing and clicking, we have a header but no body. This section right here gets populated based on these button clicks and these function calls. All right, end your table, end your aside. So we've already taken care of this table on the right hand side as far as creating our elements. Lastly, we have a footer, which is what you see right here. And I have Lisa Woodson copyright 2017. This is not my project. This is just my reiteration. This is just, I'm just showing you basically what you generally put as a copyright. Um, you know, if this is your design, you could put, you know, Debbie's Designs, copy, copyright 2017. If it's completely your original work, then putting your name with a copyright or the name of your business with a copyright symbol is um, completely legit. Okay, footer class equals header bar bottom. In, inside of the footer, we have the H5 tags, which gives us this smaller size of our font. And this is what you see inside of the header five tags. Lisa Woodson and symbol C-O-P-Y followed by the um, semicolon. This is what gives us the copyright symbol, the little C inside of a circle. That's how you do that. And then, of course, on either side of that copyright symbol, you see just regular old text. Close the H5 header tag, close the footer, close the div. This div being the, let's find the matching div. Right here for the container. Right after the body tag, it's the for the container, div class equals container. Ending body tag, ending HTML. And with that, this whole uh, video is complete. One more time, I'll show you how it works. We've registered one person. Let's register another one. All right, let's edit Bob Barker. Let's say he doesn't want to take math. He wants to take something else. Oh, well, I accidentally deleted him, so that's tough. Uh, let's edit John Doe then and say he doesn't want to take physics. He wants to take English. Now this becomes an update button, and when we click this, it has updated him instead of adding a new one. John Doe is now going to take English. If I clear this, if I hit update again or edit again for John Doe, and then I change my mind, I don't want to actually edit him, then I hit clear, which allows me to put somebody else in. And again, the delete works for everything.